Hi everyone! So today's video is going to be a red carpet look by a guest artist. And yes, I have been doing a lot of guest artist videos recently. I guess I'm making up for the fact that I hadn't done them for quite a few years and it's just so nice for me to have other makeup artists come to the studio and I love watching them work and seeing the looks that they create. So today's guest artist is Danielle Kimiko Vincent and she is also the founder of the Kimiko eyebrow line which is the pencils that I love and the brow gel that I love and any of you that watch my videos before know that I've used those pencils since they launched about five years ago and I just love them because they are so fine and so just perfect so precise amazing for doing those individual hairs and recently she launched a brow gel as well she's also a makeup artist as well as a founder and she's responsible for Sandra O's oh makeup and I absolutely love the actress Sandra O oh. I love Killing Eve I love everything that she's in and I just think she's such an amazing actress and I love the makeup that Danny does on her so I asked her to come and recreate one of those fantastic looks. So let's get started. Thanks so much, Lisa. I have learned so much over the years from your work, so it's really a privilege and an honor to be here. Today we are going to do a red carpet look that I've created for Sandra O. Oh, and we have a wonderful model, Robin, who is with us, and I hope that you can all take something great away for yourselves. So let's get started. All right, so I'd like to start with a little hand care, actually. We're going to do some um, We Later Skin Food. Uh, would you like to have a little Thank moisturization? You. Also smells really great, so it's nice and calming. Before red carpet, it's always great to have that calm, relaxing moment in the chair. So I love taking an ice roller. You can even close your eyes and just giving the client a moment to relax and kind of prepare for the event. This is really nice because it helps with puffiness. Just give the skin a bit of life. I then love to get the lips hydrated right away. So this is kind of my secret lip weapon. It's um, Ormetic Image Skin Care. It's a great lip product, really plumps and moisturizes. So the sooner that's on, the better. You can just give that a little perfect. And then I actually like to give a moment with some eye patches on just to help the eye area feel soothed. These are Baggage Claim by Wander Beauty. Love these. How's that? Feels great. Isn't it? Mm. Okay, great. So those have had a moment. So we just pull those. Tap in anything remaining. I like to start with this eye drop. It's called Lumify. It's so nice for that crystal clear eye for the red carpet. Um, and just tilt your head back and look for to the other corner. Great. There's one there. Okay, so next is we're on to skincare and I like Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Cream. It's got that perfect amount of hydration. I don't love using a ton of oils before red carpet makeup, just for longevity under the heat and the lights. So really hydrated. I mean, some people's skin can take it and take a little oil, but this is just the right amount of hydration, I find. So we're going to prime. I actually like using two primers. Here we have a hydrating primer and a mattifying primer. So I'll start with the mattifying. We're gonna do that through the center of the face. Just really helps keep glare down, just through the T-zone with the mattifying, and then we'll come in with the hydrating on the cheeks. So I do sometimes jump in with a little Japanese face razor. Sometimes we have little hairs um, and just making sure that that's smooth is perfect for that foundation looking really seamless. So you can just come in. The, bra the blade is actually wrapped. It's very safe. Okay, perfect. So let's move on to foundation. I'm using the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin, which is beautiful. This is number 12. I'm actually wearing number nine today. It's gorgeous. And we're going to work off of our little palette here. Start with the brush, working from the center of the face outwards and kind of thinking about being as thin as possible. I like working from the center outwards. Um, typically we have more redness in the center and so I, I'm a less is more lady. So if we can keep the outside as natural as possible and thin, I think that looks the most like real skin. And you can build this, it's really nice and buildable. You can even conceal with it too. It's beautiful. And sometimes I actually like to 
work in the direction of hair growth, if that makes sense, as well in pores. So you're actually coming a little bit downwards. That also helps the foundation feel like it's part of the skin. So we have number 12, but I'm seeing at the top of Robin's forehead that it's a little warmer. So we're actually gonna come in with number 18. And sometimes, you know, people do look best in two shades. We actually use two um, on Sandra. And I'm actually going to then mix the two of them and then work on the coming towards the center, just building it where we might want more coverage to the neck and look natural as well. Depending on what's being worn, you know, we'll take it down. So this looks great. We're just bouncing a damp beauty blender to make sure we have everything looking true too and like real skin. I like to start with skin. Some people like to start with eyes. There could be fallout a little bit, but and look up. I feel good when the skin is done and I also like giving a little bit of time for everything to mesh into the skin and then I can always come back and make adjustments if needed. Just using a small flat brush coming right up to the lash line. And we'll do a little bit of pinpoint concealing. This is my very handy travel palette with my NARS, I believe it's a soft matte, and a really fine brush. Just lay the product over and then feather so it's really seamless. Sometimes I'll come in with the finger around the spot I'm concealing so I'm not removing it off of the area. So I'm going to set with a little bit of loose powder. This is Tilbury's Magic Powder 2. I really like to start as light as possible and just leave the T-zone for now. And I like to powder, I mean, we're getting personal, but we're going right up under the nose because I don't like it when the camera catches shine under there. And through this little part of the eyes as well. And I'm just putting a touch here because I'm going to come in with a little bit of contour and so I want that to apply really smoothly. I don't like to overly contour. I think it's nice to bring back some dimension since we made her skin really uniform. And I never go right from a palette to her face. I'm always bopping it off on my wrist or tapping it off. It just means that you can build a lot more naturally. And so for her contour, I'm flicking it forward, not coming too far forward. And when I apply it, I like to think about this almost being like a painter's brush. A lot of the time it's easier to go back and forth. But if you think of it as if it was covered in a heavily pigmented paint, you actually wouldn't want to come back this way. We want to keep this um, tapered. I'm going to take that tip. You like that one? <laughs> takes a second of thought, but then that actually becomes habit. So just coming in right under the cheekbone, through the jawline as well, right on the jawline, just to bring that back. So on to brows now, and Robin has great brows. You can see where you might have been removing. So I love to have people leave their brows and actually I've left mine you probably saw a few errant brow hairs there but I'm always on this path to regrow and get as full of a natural brow as we can and so right here it'd be so great if you can leave those and we'll try to get this line to connect um you don't wax do you no no okay tweezing is always the best way to go if you can um so let's grab a couple strays we'll just clean that up but overall I mean I love the shape so we're just going to take a couple little hairs that are far off the path that aren't contributing to the overall shape but really what you leave is just as important as what you take so we're going to be really minimal so we're going to start her fill in black tea with a super fine eyebrow pencil automatique and a little trick is to grab a paper and just um, scribble straight down. That way you'll get a really sharp edge to draw single hairs. And you don't have to twist up much, um, just, just a little bit, and then you come in with hair strokes. I like to start in the upper arch to just really define that high point of the face and really build the brow 
hair by hair, using the spoolie on the other end to comb through as you go. And hair grows in different directions, so if you can keep the strokes in the direction of the hair growth, I, I really feel like that's the most realistic look. So many different brow techniques, but this is the one that I love. And then we're actually going to come in with our other shade Coffee, which is a really beautiful universal brown, just to give a little more dimension to the brow, but black tea is your definitely your core shade. And giving it a little bit more length, keeping in mind that we want everything to stay lifted, especially on the ends. But the brows finish um, is sort of where your eye will go when you're looking at someone, so not following it all the way down is really nice to, to keep the eye open and lifted. And then you can always start with your favorite brow. They're, they're never going to be perfectly symmetrical, but that's the beauty of it. So start with the one that you like best, and then just do um, your best to emulate it on the other side. So just coming into the fronts with one shade down to add a bit of dimension. So this is coffee now. That way it stays soft and not too filled in the fronts. It's nice to have a gradation. And we're just adding a touch of the coffee shade to really give some dimension. Just like hair has high and low lights, the brows um, can have them too. It just reads really real for camera. Okay, perfect. So just a touch of setting powder through them, and then we're going to follow with the Brow Sensei, which is our new brow gel. Um, it's this really beautiful little applicator and the spoolie is quite small so you can really maintain control. So I shall turn you here. And just starting at the front, lifting it through the brows. And you can always come back in and place any that are too high, place them back down. It's just nice to set in place. You actually have more play as well if, as it sets. You can come back in, position. I like a lifted brow, but not over the top, so kind of fa fanned in front and then back down on the sides. All right, so we're going to come in with an eye primer. Just keep that as well blended as possible so that everything applies nice and smoothly. We'll get on to shadows. So I'd like to start with a nice neutral kind of lighter base from the lash line, working up. And then once that's on, I'm going to move on to liner. So one important thing for eyes is really making sure that things stay put. I have a few favorite products that I use. Um, one of them is the Hourglass 1.5 millimeter. And so I'm going to layer your liner and we'll kind of build on it as we go. We'll do some shadow and then we'll come back over that way. And look down for me. Uh, it's really there in multiple layers and we're not going to have movement. And so I'm being sort of easy with this. This is the gel liner. I like to line and then take a fine brush and quickly blend it out. Move it along the lash line. Getting a little bit wider at the end, more narrow in the inner corner. And I like where her outer flick is already naturally landing. Again, not being so perfectly precise, but just getting it on there. Oops quickly blend it out. I think sometimes it's challenging when doing liner to know where to end. I usually don't trace the end of the, the final lash downwards. I like to keep it all uplifted. Sometimes, like for example, I have partially hooded eyes, so, and I've noticed over time that the getting the correct flick on the outside of mine is getting harder. So looking straight ahead is a really great tip to see where you will end the liner. I'm just wiggling this as tight to the lash line as I can. 
So then we're going to come in with almost like another base because I really want these shadows to stick. This is the Laura Mercier Amethyst Caviar Stick Eye Color. And so just a close for me. Right in. I'm actually going to just do the initial blend with fingers. It's a beautiful color. It makes such a nice base. Applying it more to the outer part of the eye and working my way in just because that's where I want to add a bit of contour and have it most concentrated. Again, keeping the concept of everything being upwards and open. Come in with a fluffy brush and just make sure that's really blended. You know, sometimes it's hard to know how high to go with your shadows. You can feel for your brow bone and you, you want to stay below that. And if you look forward and you're, you don't have a lot of lid showing, then you can actually work your way above that and do a color wash and come a little bit higher so that you see it when you're looking head on. So we're going to come in with um, some of the plumier tones from this Tilbury palette. I'm just going to really start building the eye up, taking off that excess and close. And almost creating like a small V-like shape. Nice and warm, it's adding a bit of depth. Just building up slowly as we go. Continuing to build the eye, I'm now going to come into this slightly deeper shade from Armani with a slightly smaller brush. I just want to work a little bit of color now in this outer section and create depth close to the lash line. So really just layering and building intensity. So now we are going to pump up the liner just a little bit. Um, I've actually used some Inglot Longwear gels and I combined black with a touch of brown just to bring a bit more into it. So look down for me. We're going to come and down that way. Perfect. We're going to come back over what we've done and just intensify it a little bit. And this is really great for waterline as well. And this way, down, perfect. Which normally is a last step just for longevity, um, but we'll pop in and do, we'll do that right now. Really intensifies the lash line once you've come onto that waterline. And so what I'm trying to do is just have no gaps at all bet in between the lashes and the top eyeliner and then what we're doing with the waterline. Keep it nice and cohesive. So I'm just adding a bit more depth along the lash line and towards the outer section just to keep drawing everything outwards. And I want people to be able to see her from far away. So this event Sandra was hosting, so she did a red carpet and then was up on stage under different lighting. So working to make sure it looked good for red carpet and then adding a bit of intensity for stage. So I have these great Japanese lashes that I love. Part of what I love about them is the length is just right. So let's see if we have to trim or not. Just place that over. Look straight ahead. It actually looks pretty much perfect. So a little trick I like to do, um, especially I do this for myself too because of the curvature of my eye, but I will actually place the lash around the end of a brush and I'll give it a minute to just get a bit of curvature as I'm working. That way it will adhere and those corners would be less likely to pop off on the inner and outer corners. So, okay, now that that's had a moment to set, I'm going to just paint some dark tone duo on the inside of the lash. Give it a moment to get tacky. Actually, I like to give a teeny bit of a curl. Place that close as we can, and then I like to just pop the ends in as it's setting, just to make sure that's adhering properly. And so now that that's on, actually we'll take a curler and look down again, and just really gently kind of press her natural lash into the false lash. Okay, so next we're going to come in with a really fine liner and just make sure that you can't see the band. The thing I love about these Japanese lashes is that they are really fine. So you can't 
see the seam, which is great. And then we'll come in with some mascara to merge the lash with the natural lash. And then this is one of my favorite mascaras. It stays on all day, it's beautiful. And just work that in to her real lash and then fuse the false lash with, with her own. Just adds an extra oomph. And then I don't typically do a lot on the bottom uh, in terms of makeup for Sandra. Sometimes I will take um, my super fine eyebrow pencil and actually just ever so slightly create a thicker lash line. So, so subtle. Okay. Super subtle and up here. So it's not a line, just a slight lash enhancement that looks super natural. This is a great mascara for the under eye, it's got this beautiful little brush. And so look out for me, just catch a bit of those small lashes. So on the day of for Sandra, we actually did a double lash, um, which obviously is quite over the top. So not for every day for everyone, but um, essentially these Japanese lashes, but twice as many. So let's move on to finishing the skin. Just coming back over where we had contoured. With the bronzy tone. Not very much on my brush, I'm just keeping it really light. It's for the temples. Sometimes I'll go in with the blush and then see what we might need to add. So I'm using Charlotte Tilbury's uh, Cheek to Cheek and Pillow Talk, and then kind of just blow a, there we go. And just warming up the cheek. I don't like to bring blush too far to the center of the face. Outwards is really fresh. So I'm loving where the skin is. I think we're going to just warm up a little bit more with a touch of bronzer. This is one from Guerlain. And a nice fluffy brush. Again, knocking off all that excess because I just want to warm the skin where the sun would hit. And then as a final skin touch, this is the Seamless Skin Elevated Glow Highlighter from Lisa. And this is Crystal Nebula. So I'm going to be pretty light with this. Um, just warming it between my fingers and making sure there's, it's all blended. And then really gently on the top of the cheekbones. I want the highlighter to just look like an inner glow. So I'm not, towards me, applying too much, but to really add extra dimension to the look little touch of the lip. It's going to blot off that nice lip treatment we did. We're going to come in with Kimiko lip liner in May. And so you have really beautifully defined lips on their own. I'd like to use this almost like a lipstick base. So I'm lining and then pulling the color down. We'll, we'll go through and blend that with the brush. Towards me. This color is really pretty on me. Sometimes there's almost a double lip line. And so based on the look you're doing and on your client, you may, you know, decide to go with one or the other, depending on how much of a lip look you want to do. Okay. And then these actually have a lip brush on the end. Let me use that to feather. I used a different lipstick the day of for Sandra, but since we are at the house of Eldridge, it's fun to play a little, so I'm going to use one of her gorgeous glosses. And the shade is Cinnabar. This is in the tone that we did the day of. Works beautifully on you. 
Okay, so that's just a finishing touch on the lip. And then we'll do a touch of powder, final touch of powder. And then I actually like to powder just the edge of the ear and then turn for me, just in case that catches any light. Okay, that's the final makeup look. I think we're going to let your hair down and then we'll have a look. Okay, there it is. There's the final look. I think you are ready to walk the red carpet.